Hi there, I'm Gareth. Well, let's have a look at this example. We're going to make sure we understand how to use the FIFO method of inventory valuation. So we've got our example here, a business buying and selling bananas. And in one particular month, so in January here, they've got three transactions for us to deal with. So on the 1st of January, they bought 20 bananas. So they've purchased some bananas. That's some bananas going into the storeroom. That's an increase in their inventory. And those bananas cost 20 pence each. On the 5th of January, they bought 30 further bananas. So that's another purchase. We've got more bananas going into the storeroom. Those bananas cost a little bit more. They were 30 pence each. You will, in these kind of examples, often see the price of purchases rising over time. That's typically because of inflation. Inflation normally means that prices rise over a period of time. So we're paying slightly more for the bananas on the 5th of January than we did on the 1st of January. Now you can imagine at that point, well, we've bought two lots of bananas, 20 and 30. So we've actually got 50 units of inventory at that point. We've got 50 actual bananas, and we then, on the 10th of January, sell 40 of them. So this is what's sometimes referred to as an issue of inventory. We've got bananas coming out of the storeroom, being sold to hungry customers. Now, if we had 50 bananas and we've sold 40 of them, at the end of the month, presumably we're therefore going to have 10 bananas left. The thing that's more important for us to consider, though, is what will be, firstly, the cost of the issue. Now the cost of the issue is the cost of those 40 bananas that they've sold. If they can work out the cost of the issue, they could compare that to the revenue they've generated. We don't know that here, but we could look at the revenue they've generated and work out the profit on the sale. And also, the value of the remaining inventory. I What's the value of, in this case, the 10 bananas that they're going to have left at the end of the month? So two figures we're trying to identify, and to start with, let's think about it under FIFO. So FIFO is the assumption that the first in is the first out. So basically we sell the oldest units, which you can imagine with something like bananas, which is a perishable foodstuff. Bananas do go off after a while, they go all mushy and horrible and you wouldn't want to eat them. So if you're dealing with perishable food stuff, we would want to sell the older bananas first before they do go off. Now, how can we go about working at the figures that we need? Well, there's different ways you can do this. There's a variety of different ways of working through the numbers and presenting things. I'm going to show you what I think is a fairly useful approach. So you could grab a scrap of paper and basically set up a little table I'm going to take you through. Now, on the table, I'm going to have a column for the dates that we're dealing with. In this case, we've got three dates, the 1st, the 5th, and the 10th of January. For each transaction, I'm going to consider the number of units that were involved, so how many actual bananas were being bought or sold. I've then got to consider the cost per unit. Remember, the cost per unit was changing over time. And then based on that, I can actually work out the total cost of each transaction. Now, I'll give you an idea of what we can do here, therefore. So, on the 1st of January. We've got the first purchase. We've bought 20 bananas. We've got an increase in our level of inventory. So there are 20 units, 20 actual bananas, and at a cost of 20 pence each. Now I'll put that in in pounds. So 20p is 0.2 pounds. And to work out the total cost, I just need to multiply 20 units by 20 pence per unit, or 20 times 0.2. I think the total cost of that first purchase would be four pounds. We've spent four pounds on the first purchase of bananas. So at that point, that would be the value of our inventory. We've then got on the 5th of January, another purchase. We bought another 30 bananas. And you can imagine, as we've already said, at that point, we've therefore got 50 bananas in total, 50 units, with purchases, with buying further units of inventory, sometimes called receipts of inventory. With receipts, you just add the receipts onto the existing stock, so add the 30 bananas onto the 20. Now remember, there was a different cost per unit. Those bananas were costing us 30 pence, or 0.3 pounds per unit. 
Now 30 times 0.3 gives me a total cost for that purchase of £9. And again, with receipts, you can just add on not just the number of units, but also the cost of the transaction. So we had £4 worth of inventory from the 1st of January. We just bought another £9 worth of inventory. So I think that at that point, we've got 50 bananas with a total value of £13. Now, dealing with receipts or purchases, relatively straightforward. As you can see, we just add on the units and add on the total value. The harder bit comes when you're dealing with sales or issues of inventory, because this is where we now need to start thinking about our method, our inventory valuation method. So on the 10th of January, well, we know we're selling 40 bananas. So in fact, the units are fairly straightforward. By the end of January, we'll therefore be left with 10 units. The idea with sales or with issues of inventory is we just knock them off the total at that point. But the hard of it comes in valuing those 40 bananas. Now, this is where we've got to consider our assumptions. So we're starting using FIFO. First in is the first out. So where will this 40 bananas come from? Well, remember, we want to sell the oldest bananas. So the first in was the 20 that we purchased back on the 1st of January. They were the first into the storeroom, so they'll be the first out. So I'm just going to break down my 40 because I can take the 20 units we had from the 1st of January and remember those ones were at 20 pence per unit so actually that's that four pounds worth of inventory that's going to make up the first portion of the 40 I'm now selling but obviously there were only 20 bananas that we bought on the 1st of January that doesn't make up the full 40 so we've then got to go to the next oldest inventory so at that point we've then got the 30 we bought on the 5th of January well actually I don't need that entire 30 do I because remember I only need to sell 20, uh, 40 bananas in total so the 40 we're selling is all of the bananas from the 1st of January plus I then need another 20 from the 5th of January which we paid 30 pence per unit for now, 20 times 30 pence per unit gives me a cost of those 20 bananas of six pounds. You can see those 20 bananas have a cost higher than the other 20 because we'd paid a higher cost per unit. Now, remember, we're after two figures here. Firstly, the cost of the issue. So the issue is the 40 bananas. The cost in total will be the four pound value of the first 20 plus the six pound value of the other 20. So I think my first figure, the cost of the issue is £10, 4 plus 6. And we also want the value of the remaining inventory, which is the 10 bananas that are left. Well, we saw with the units, when you make a sale or when you make an issue, you just knock off the volume. Well, same idea with the cost, just knock off the cost. So the total cost of the issue was £10 we've identified. Well, 13 less £10 leaves me £3 as the value of the remaining 10 bananas. And you can actually double-check the logic of that figure. It's worth doing a double-check in your assessments. Now, bear in mind, the 40 units we were selling, we took the entire 20 that we purchased on the 1st of January. That's now all gone. That's been sold to our hungry customers. We then took 20 of the 30 that we bought on the 5th of January, which means we'd still have 10 remaining from that purchase. So in fact, the 10 we've got remaining, logically, must all be at 30 pence per unit value. And if you do 10 times 30, you can double check, that does indeed give me three pounds. So the two figures I've derived under FIFO, the cost of the issue, the cost of the 40 bananas we sold is 10 pounds. That's the figure we could compare to our revenue to see what profit we've made. And then the value of the remaining inventory, the 10 bananas that are left, is £3.